Hey, it's MJ from the MJ Morning Show on Q105, 104.7 FM, Tampa Bay. And you're listening to the Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. People often argue over Android versus iPhones. But the real debate should be middle-aged Gen X morning shows versus Hoppy Hour. Guess who wins? We will let you decide. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Yes, now. What? No, 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 no. If I hit this button, uh -huh. boom, the whole program's gonna start. Okay, well, hit it. All right. Something completely different. Smoke. Medical. Weed every day. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour represent Brian Hoppy and Pastic. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. Happy Hour starts in four. Three, two, hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy. Yeah, it is. Uh. Mm -hmm. uh. Doubt it, yeah. never worry about the dollar. No. Need a source or trending topic. Yeah. Be the hottest search about us. Competition yeah. microscopic, never copied. I'm a giant rolling weed up. Now we flying. Oh. This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. A lot of people ask why I go, mm. why not? 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. It's time for Hoppy's Inbox, only on Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Uh, <laughs> I love pissing off the trolls. I'll be honest. I used to be a little bit afraid of the trolls. Not afraid, but like I would delete all comments or I would just give it a heart and uh, put it on mute. Now I love doing it because it's so easy to piss off trolls. Because trolls think they're so mighty and so smart. But they're really a bunch of recovering high school bullies that have nothing else in their life. And this all goes back to the beginning of September, almost of June, when I called out Carl Heberger from that terrible podcast, Who Are These Podcasts, where all they do is talk about others. And when they do it, it's acceptable. But when anybody calls them out, heaven forbid, you call out the Opie and Anthony copycats. Bunch of wusses. So I made a video, two and a half minute video, because I began this war. And let me tell you, I purposely did this. Everything I do when it comes to my social media presence and my show is calculated. There is not one part of the show that isn't calculated. Now, my love life and my family and my friends, I don't calculate people like that because I'm not a sociopath like other people on radio. But when it comes to my podcast, everything I do is calculated. Like, for example, the other day, one of my former co-workers took me off of uh, Snapchat, so I texted him saying pretty much I wish him nothing but the best, and I'm not sure why he took me off of Snapchat. And then he added me on Snapchat, and then he, I think it got talked about on air. It's all for free publicity. Every time you talk about me, mm -hmm, it helps me. And I don't think people get that. Because a lot of these people that talk smack about others, if it's a podcast or radio show, they think they're doing themselves a favor. You saw what happened to uh, Opie and Anthony, Howard Stern, Man Cow, Bubba the Love Sponge, all of the people that called out everybody back in the day. Now they're all a bunch of middle-aged people that everybody hates. And this podcast, Who Are These Podcasts, tries so hard to be like Opie and Anthony. And it's like, do you want to end up being, you know, uh, irrelevant at the age of 57? I mean, come on now. But we got a lot of comments here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> First comment. 
You're butthurt. You got clowned. Get over it. I'm the one that began this whole war with this stupid podcast. I didn't get clowned. They got clowned because they fell for my trick. They've given me thousands of listens. Thank you. Next comment. Don't take the stuttering John approach. A lot of people, whenever you call out other people online, they say, oh, you're like stuttering John. No. A lot of these people that they compare me to, all they talk about is other people. I talked about a podcast for two minutes and then two and then did two hours of good content with throwback hits. So kiss my ass. Next comment. Who the hell is Ryan Hoppy? Trust me, that's the most relatable comment I've ever gotten because I'm trying to figure that out myself. Next comment. Fun fact, Carl has a beard and she's 18 years older than him. How disgusting. He needs to come out of the closet. Also, I wouldn't get that bent out of shape over it. Hopefully it directs more traffic to you and your show and you benefit from it on the long run. Also, wasn't Ryan's Hope a soap opera? (laughs) I have a good story about that. I went for a job interview in Seattle about six months ago and I was a runner up for it. I wanted it, but I'm kind of glad I didn't get it in a way because then I would have had to leave Florida. But I really wanted the job because I was working at a conservative company and I was really unhappy uh, because I was working at a conservative company and all they talk about is trans people because they're obsessed because they're a bunch of bullies, kind of like these trolls I'm reading. And I had the interview and the guy goes, this is like a soap opera. And I go, what do you mean? This is how the Zoom call begins. And he goes, well, your last name's Hope. And it was the show Ryan's Hope. And then there's that awkward moment when I have to correct people. And I'm like, it's actually Hoppy. So that comment made me think about that. This is my favorite comment though I got. (laughs) Have you tried doing a podcast without a sock in your mouth? (laughs) Again, to all the trolls out there, you're just doing exactly what I wanted you to do. You made me relevant. I was relevant before, but I was relevant in Tampa. And I got six comments from this podcast hating on me. It's nothing. I've had to deal with the rage and the uh, attacks of Rover's Morning Glory over the years. And personal attacks about my personal life from my former friend, Mike Kelta. Hope to someday make up with him, but he has a few things to say sorry about. So I've dealt with actual radio drama, not some podcast that talks about others because they're copying Opie and Anthony. (laughs) I just love when people that have the power, if it's a shock jock or this podcast, it's cool when they call out other people. But when I do it, oh, you're you're just jealous. You're butthurt. I'm the one that began this whole madness. (laughs) You're doing me a favor. Carl, I know you're listening to this and all the trolls out there. If you really hate me, never talk about me again. Because this is what I wanted. When I interviewed Chad Zumach seven weeks ago, Chad's one of my friends. I would like to think he would say the same. I mean, we don't hang out, but I've known the guy 11 years and I've been a fan. And I said, how can I get some attention from the mutants online that are in this thing called the Dabbleverse? And I said, let me interview my boy, Chad Zumach, who I think is the best at it. And then I'll get all this attention. And you fell for my bait, which shows that you're an amateur. Because I call out uh, Cowhead or Rover, and they don't really respond. But I call you guys out, and you make a video about me, and then you make a few podcasts about me. And it's like, thank you. Come again. (laughs) You're only helping me, dummies. Happy hour. Happy hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy hour will be right back. Whenever we're going outside, um, we all I smell is poop. Hand the nuts and we'll call it a day. As a reminder, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip over it. But Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour takes pride in his selection, so stick around, folks. East Atlanta slab rider, heavy grinder for paper. Yeah. City slicker, heavy weight in the game. Froze, Mr. Earlobes, heavy weight in my chain. Yeah. Hitting the game where you niggas be slacking. Got the drove for the low, that's what my niggas be sacking. My shell toe 
hoes, pedal shabbies and bowls. White letters on the cutlass with my hog and it flows. I'm riding through oak coast, coated like Starburst. Candy paint glisten, looking greasy like Brockburst. The dude on my jersey is gray and deceased. You rested in peace, for stitching to decay the police. Serving niggas with a ghetto subpoena. Got that eight town stuffing back in Phillips Serena. I'm passing hoes like collection plates and keep a broad on my squad who won't section eight. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. They gon' love me after this one, shout for real, man. All my trap niggas and drove smokers, keep it strippers, stay focused, pussy poppin' and rollin'. Cause all I wear is hats with A's, shopping at walls with white tees, Cartier's. Yeah. Jeans creased up straight out the cleaner. Watch my George Jefferson straight in my southern demeanor. When they see me when I speak my slang, everybody wanna know my and name. Show I was born in Atlanta, raised in Decatur, where we push the sabers and blow like inhaler. Say he kinda skinny with a full size Jimmy. Hey man, I got brows in different cities like Gimme Gimme. They used to treat me like Irk of the Nerd. Now they flock when they see my LeBron's on the curve. Look here, see my upholstery, it got women approaching me. Some look like they too old for me. TV singing up. Appropriately. It's major way, baby. I told you gonna love me, Pippa. Yeah. When you see me in the six tray drop, and I tell you that the price of the work just dropped. Yeah. I let the thing go pop. I caught Buddy round there snitching off to the cops. Yeah. And the game don't stop. Don't stop. You try to see my dope, you gonna see this folk. Get it? I'm 31 and my rapping is done. I got a million dollar company to run. Yeah. Cause I smoke like you, want me to some blue. I buy them, lick them, split them, roll them just like you. Yeah. In double XL, murder dog, the sword, some vibes. I'm rolling stones and late model rides, homie. I'm grand hustling, disturbing the peace. I'm so deaf, putting organized noise in the street. Yeah, I'm smoking earth tones, chong and cheek. You beat your meat. Oh really? Yeah, I heard ya. <laughs> Here comes the best part. Yeah. What's going on? It's the shit, bitch. Yeah, it is. The hour will be right back. The hour will be right back. The hour will be right back. One more time. The hour will be right back. Oh, yes. This following segment has been brought to you by the best kava and kratom bar around. Mm -hmm. The Chill Room of Pinellas Park. For all the info, go to thechillroom.com. They also have a location in Stewart, Florida. And they're at 6709 49th Street North, and that's in Pinellas Park. 727-827-2339. 727-827-2339. That's 727-827-2339. They are open 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. throughout the week and until midnight on Sundays. Got it? All right. Before we go back to the show, I am teaming up with San Francisco radio legend Hammer and Hank. We're doing a podcast starting next month, and it's going to be big. And here is his award-winning PSA. People with autism are often treated like they are different. Believe me, we are. Hi, this is Henry Oaks, but my buddies may have known me as Hammer and Hank. I was labeled as slow when I started school. Come to find out at the age of 12, the doctors decided I was autistic. 
Now at the age of 48, I have completed an associate degree in radio broadcasting and worked in the San Francisco Bay Area as an on-air personality. So yes, I am different. People of autism have no needs no different than you. Laugh, laugh, love, and learn to gain education and join the workforce. I did it, and so can anyone else of autism. So when you meet someone of autism, don't feel sorry for them. Work with them. Find out for yourself that autism isn't a disease, it's a condition. To find out more about autism, please visit AutismSpeaks.org. Autism Speaks. It's time to listen. You're juggling breakfast, emails, and that existential crisis, but don't worry, we've got your back. It's Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Here's some new AI music. Step into the hoppy hour, clock strikes nine. Sex talk, celeb gossip, got the stars aligned. Brian Hoppy Ho, speakers bumping divine. 2000s throwbacks, rewind and redefine. Tune in live, get your mind unzipped. Bust the hottest topics. The tea drips Ryan keep it wild No sense or no script yeah. Late night vibes Ain't nobody skipping this trip Copy hour Turn it up Feel the power Stars and scandals Minute by the hour Sex tales Fit yeah. to make the uptight tower oh, sure. Ryan in control Never gonna sour yeah. Bumps, Dre and Snoop Yeah, them classics on repeat Hotline bling All the rumors on the street Drum is so thick Can't slice with a cleat Hoppy's voice steady on 856 49 hobby. Spread like plague. 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me. Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Feel the power. Stars and scandals. Minute by the hour. Sex tales still to make the uptight tower. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Ah. <sighs> Little Dirk might be the stupidest person ever. I grew up in Chicago. I love Chicago rap between uh, maybe when I was born in 1993 until about 2017 when they all got lazy. But early Lil Dirk with some really good music. This ain't what you want right here. Clout. But now Little Dirk's in a little bit of trouble, and I hope it was worth it. We, I don't personally idolize these rappers, but a lot of people idolize these gangster rappers and then it's like guys like Lil or a Young Thug and Lil Durk. Like, you're getting life in prison. That's pretty lame. Lil Durk is facing legal issues. The rapper, whose real name is Dirk Devontae Banks, was arrested October 24th in Broward County, Florida, by U.S. Marshals on pending charges of murder. Getting taken in by the U.S. Marshals is not good in Broward County, Florida, by U.S. Marshals on pending charges of murder for hire, according to police records. Mm. His arrest comes one week after the U.S. District Court for the Central District of California unsealed an indictment that charged five people with ties to the hip-hop group Only the Family, which he founded in 2010. As Yeah, that group is terrible. They make like 30 songs that are all like a minute and a half, and it's like, man... You used to make really good songs 12, 13 years ago. Now it's garbage. Co-conspirators in the 2022 killing of an individual only named as SR in Los Angeles, according to documents obtained by NBC News. No, not SR. However, it's unclear if Banks's recent arrest is connected with this case. Probably. I don't know, man. Obviously, Chicago, you're kind of born into crime if you're from a bad neighborhood, but... Don't you want freedom? Lil Dirk was just in Power Book 2 in the last few episodes. He makes music that is not good anymore, but he gets a lot of listens. And I know their friend King Von was killed four years ago in November. But, like, 
Is it worth it? Really? Kayvon London Grant, DeAndre Dontrell, Wilson, Keith Jones, David Brian Lindsay, and Asa Houston. Were A bunch of names there. I bet they use rapper names because those names are geeky. Indicted on charges, including conspiracy and use of interstate facilities to commit murder for hire, resulting in death. Yeah, that's what happens. Murder for hire. I didn't know it results in death. Duh. Use, carry, and discharge of firearms and machine gun, as well as possession of such firearms in furtherance of a crime of violence resulting in death. The filing alleged that the target of the attack was intended to be someone named TB due to... Yeah, so they might have got the wrong person. <laughs> you can't even do it right. You can't make good music and you can't even do a hit right. His involvement in the 2020 killing of someone named DB on the same day of the... She's getting the info wrong. Incident. Multiple outlets reported that OTF rapper King Vaughn, real name Davon Bennett, was killed outside of an Atlanta nightclub. What she got wrong when she said someone named DB, but it's that's King Vaughn. After an altercation with rapper Quando Rondo, whose real name is Taekwon Terrell Bowman. I like Rajon Rondo, Rondo better than Quando Rondo. And his associates. At the time, police told NBC News in a statement, our investigators believe Mr. Bennett was shot during the initial shootout between the two groups of males prior to police responding and attempting to stop the shooting. E yeah, I don't get it. I didn't come from crime. I came from the suburbs and I used to be really stupid. I used to <laughs> get it. I used to drive through the bad neighborhoods. Oh, black where Chief Keefe is from and knows ghetto neighborhoods. It's crazy. You'll be in downtown Chicago and it's all nice. And then you go 20 minutes south and lock your doors. E! News has reached out to reps of banks and has not yet heard back. Every E! News clip is like, we reached out and they never hear back. It's like, hmm, maybe you should stop reaching out. As well as Broward County officials and has not yet heard back. I feel like TMZ gets better info. I feel like they hear back more than E! News. I feel like E! News sends an email and they're like, hey, can we get some info? But TMZ like gives money. The defendants named in the indictment have not retained counsel. Tension between the two groups has risen since the 2020 death, which prosecutors allege was the catalyst for the 2022 killing. The suspect in Bennett's death, who was an associate of Bowman's according to the indictment, had all the charges dropped from the incident last year. As Here's what I don't get. Okay, I get that a lot of the rappers from Chicago, Chief Keef, Lil Durk, Rest in peace, little JoJo, who got whacked like 12, 13 years ago. But I, I get that you come from crime because that's kind of what's in the bad neighborhoods. But don't you want to like end it and just like not leave your mansion and make money? Lil Dirk makes great money. I believe he has a kid. He's got girlfriends. And then you go to kill somebody. I know your dude was killed, but it's like, is it worth it? I know there's pride and I know I'm not in a gang, so I don't really get it. But it's like, isn't the whole point is to get out of the bad neighborhood? and then never return? I don't know. Food for thought. As the newly unsealed indictment SR murder case alleges, an unnamed co-conspirator, part of the OTF, stated they would pay a bounty or monetary reward to anyone who took part in the killing. I love hearing this reporter say OTF. She sounds so Caucasian of TB following DB's death. In August 2022, gunmen opened fire on TB's car with him, his sister, and mm. SR inside at a gas station in West Hollywood. While he and his sister were uninjured, his cousin was struck multiple times and died from his injuries. Here's the thing. It's got to be crazy being like a gangster rapper or even just like a gangster and you got to always look over your back to make sure you're not killed. Mm-hmm. According to the documents, although only initials are used throughout the document, on the same day at the 2022 incident, Bowman was the victim of a shooting where his cousin, Lil Pub, whose real name is Xavier Robinson, was... <laughs> I love how he's got a nickname and it's like Xavier Robinson. <laughs> ...killed, the Chicago Tribune reported. Prosecutors accused the defendants of using coded language to tell their alleged co-conspirators that they would be rewarded for the murder. They also accused the defendants of using... OTF resources to facilitate the incident. The indictment reads, on August 18th, 2022, defendant Wilson recruited defendants Jones and Lindsay to travel to California for the purpose of murdering TB and yeah. helped facilitate such travel by 
among other things, oh, sure. texting co-conspirator three biographical information about defendants Jones and Lindsay so that co-conspirator three could book flights to Southern California. Just a month before Banks' arrest, the rapper expressed gratitude for a new chapter in his life and shared that his legal trouble was behind him. Yeah. Why would you think that you tr you got somebody murdered? It's going to come back to get you. Banks was previously charged with attempted murder in connection with a 2019 shooting in Atlanta. Among the charges were aggravated assault, participation in criminal street gang activity. This makes you feel like such a wimp. Like, here I am arguing with other podcasts <laughs> that we would never say to each other's face. And then you got people actually killing each other. <laughs> Possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, as well as possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, according to an official filing from the Fulton County District Attorney's Office per Rolling Stone. Oh, wow. Well. <sighs> it makes me really grateful that I don't commit crimes. I didn't expect this on my 2024 bingo card, but it's Sarah Jessica Parker reacting to Megan the Stallion Sex in the City opinions. Mm-hmm. I had to wonder. Yeah. <laughs> but she makes life very interesting. Is that me? <laughs> Sarah Jessica Parker is reacting to Megan Thee Stallion's hot takes on the characters from Sex and the City. Megan Thee Stallion would like Sex and the City because there's the word sex in it. After Megan reveals that she just got around to binge watching the hit show starring Sarah Jessica Parker, Kim Cattrall, Kristen Davis, and Cynthia Nixon for the first time, the show's star is reacting to her opinion. Mm. When Evan Ross Katz reshares Megan's takes on Instagram, SJP chimes in in the comments section by simply writing, Hmm. As for what Megan said about the famous television friend group, for starters, she's definitely Team Samantha. Let's talk about Samantha. Is this not a picture of me? Because... <laughs> no, it's not. She's prettier. And less trashy. All right, this is kind of a visual. It's Jimmy Fallon asking about sex in the city. So we're going to uh, move on. Mm -hmm. I have that saying, if I'm bored, you are bored. I saw this here. I don't know. I never got the whole Bruce Springsteen thing. I'm not from uh, the tri-state area, so it's not really for me. But I just sing, it's music born in the USA. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. It's like, shut up, bro. Shut up. You're not entertaining. You're insufferable, and you're an annoying liberal. Well, after this break, we will discuss how he's pro Kamala, because he's an out-of-touch billionaire. Happy hour. Happy hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy hour will be right back. Whenever we're going outside, um, we all I smell is poop. In the nuts, and we'll call it a day. As a reminder, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip over it. But Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour takes pride in his selection, so stick around, folks. You just don't know what you do to me. <laughs> uh. I know what it is. Hey, you say Shy City Hustle music, thank you You're about to be a part of some of epic proportion This right here This is one of those records Bye I came to die I'm leaving your style My imagination is running wild What up, what up, what up Yo, I thought y'all would have a good time, man I'll take y'all around with you party a little bit Crazy over you Take you home and break you off. First off, 
Let me say how cold you is Like a winner in Chicago, you is A sight to see, and I might be your next ex-boyfriend Your future toy when that ex kick in Plus I'm new reach like Great Gatsby Don't ask me how a kid from the hundreds went from ashy to classy Me classy, how your shoes match your hair back and let you pass me Had a tool real sassy, let's blow in the wind Hit a couple spots and spend three months rent You can even bring your friends and we can roam down Lakeshore Drive I do what it takes to make sure I be the favorite tonight Cause I'm digging your style, my imagination is Mama, I ain't like them other jerks that's approaching you with perks. Puffing on BC, swearing that it's perp. Nah, not me, I'm hotter than a pot of grease. Real like documentaries, I love doing me. You gon' love it too, you gon' love how I move. Got you open like who? Did it and what done it? Lame, baby, far from it. I've done it from zero to one, two, five, under eight X arrows, girl, they handle that way. The things I say, like if your left leg's Christmas and your right's Thanksgiving, then I'm visiting between the holidays. <laughs> I know I'm silly, then an M-U-G, this goose bait breeze got me feeling T-I-P, S Y. Now you can ride, not for real, you can ride. will be right back. The hour will be right back. The hour will be right back. Uh, let's get this going. Mm-hmm. This following segment has been brought to you by DZBZHoney.com. The best Delta 8 CBD honey around. It comes in the form of a lollipop, la la lick the lollipop, the wrapper, a honey stick, or a jar of honey. However the hell you feel like getting high, you can make it happen, Captain, by going to dzbzhoney.com and at checkout, use keyword hoppy, H-O-P-P-E. This is also being brought to you by fortify.com, F-O-R-T-I-F-E-Y-E.com. At checkout, use keyword Ryan20 to save 20% on the best nutrition products. Pre-workout, whatever you need. Fortify.com, use keyword Ryan20. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to come back on a happy hour, and we're just going to keep this party going and going. Hey, this is Lex from the Lex and Terry Radio Network, and we are now ready to name our successor, Ryan Hoppy. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. It's 
the wine hobby with the hour Some yeah. pretty tales and wild confessions Got your mind and obsessions, no need for lessons Sex tales full of champagne showers Rocking the mic with relentless power Two thousand champs fill the airwaves Turn it up loud, let's miss the haze It's the hobby hour here through the night 856-49 Hobby 856-494-6773 So lend an ear you can tweet at me at Ryan Hobby Radio. You can always email me, Ryan Hobby Radio at gmail.com. Drama without the greetings. Flashy lights, fast cars, the chase. Ryan brings the heat, let's pick up the pace. Explosive news like dynamite scatter. Every scandal hits like it really matters. It's the Hobby out here through the night. Gossip tales that cut like a knife. No! Happy Hot Topic! All right, here's the very relatable billionaire known as Bruce Springsteen talking about tyrant-in-chief Donald Trump. Oh, you're such a hack. I'm Bruce Springsteen, and I am here today. We know who you are. You got that insufferable voice. Trust me. Bruce Springsteen, and I am here today to support Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz for president. He said it right, right here. Support Kamala Harris and Mala. Tim Waltz for president and Vice President of the United States. Look at all that dumb cheering. We're a bunch of liberals. We don't even really like them. We just don't like Trump. Yeah. Mutants. And to oppose, to oppose Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. I wonder if Bruce Springsteen has ever done an event for Donald Trump. He's so against them. It makes you wonder if they were ever buddies. What are you going to do to fix the country? I love how Kamala and Tim Wallace, all they talk about is Trump bad, Trump bad, Trump bad. But what are you going to do to help out America? You haven't even visited Florida, you scumbags. Now, here's why. I want a president who reveres the Constitution. What about the fact that we pretty much went against the basis of America, which is earning the nomination and not just making Joe Biden think that he's going to be uh, running again and then kind of pulling a bait and switch and putting in the side check? What about that? Who does not threaten but wants to protect and guide our great democracy? Oh, yeah, by sleeping her way to the top. I don't look at Kamala. Obviously, I kind of want her to win over Trump because of like gay and social rights. But I don't look at her and go, oh, she's going to take care of me. She's a dumb prosecutor. She's not a good person. Who believes in the rule of law and the peaceful transfer of power. Oh, yeah. Because I really want her in power. She makes all women look bad. You sleep your way to the top. And I know we do need a first woman president. I get it. But it's like, not her. At least Hillary earned it in 2016. Who will fight for a woman's right to choose. Well, that's accurate. I'm good with that. And who wants to create a middle-class economy that will serve all our citizens. There is only one candidate in this election yeah. who holds those principles dear. Of course there's only one candidate. You didn't even have like a primary. You didn't even give anybody a chance to run. You didn't give Pete Buttigieg a chance to run. We just thought Biden was going to have it. Morons. Yeah, the guy that goes, burn in the USA. Yeah, he's really relatable. Kamala Harris. I love when people call it Kamala. It sounds better than Kamala. It sounds smarter. Kamala sounds like someone with, I got a Kamala toe. She's running to be the 47th president of the United States. Mm. Donald Trump is running to be an American tyrant. Oh, you got him, bro. Oh, you got him. You hear that, like, barely any cheers? Oh, you got him. Oh, whatever. Moron. I just can't stand the celebrities that are backing Kamala. Obviously, I'm cool with her gay rights and her trans rights and her women's rights. I am 100% down with that. Trump's a phony. You know he's probably gotten abortions in the past. Here's the thing, though. I can't stand Ben Stiller, Jack Black, all these people that are like, or uh, Mark Hamill that are so liberal. It's like, you can't relate to us. You're a bunch of morons. It's okay if you think that candidate's better than the other, but don't don't come at us like, oh yeah, we really care. 
I've been wondering, I'm not trying to go down the conspiracy route. I don't know how Trump lost in 2020 to this guy. Here is Joe Biden talking about um, some things he messed up, and he promises there's nothing wrong with him. Oh, you're so normal how you're 84 years old or whatever. I'm Joe Biden. I'm Jill Biden's husband. <laughs> we know. You're whipped. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go, thank you for the introduction. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. <laughs> and to the Gila. By doing that, I just really spit on the microphone. It was gross. Indian River community, the healing. <laughs> Is he going to die like two years after getting out of office? I'm, I mean, I know we all have to die, but I'm a little afraid for him. He shouldn't be a <laughs> up there. Guy can't even <laughs> talk. Yeah, he'll have nothing wrong with me. It's sad. I despise Biden, but it's honestly kind of sad watching him do this. The guy has served for 52 years. You can like him or not, but he served and worked for 52 years. And <laughs> This is how he's going out. It sounds like he's going down on Jill. Hail the River Indian community for welcoming me today. You know, uh, um, everyone's given a sympathy clap. It's like watching someone give a speech in class. This was me. And everyone's like, after the speech is terrible, everyone's like, yeah, good job. That's the smartest thing. That's a sm Now I'm talking like him. That's the smartest thing he's ever said. I say this with all sincerity. Yeah. This, to me, mm. is one of the most consequential things I've ever had an opportunity to do. What? In my whole Talk normal? My whole career as President of the United States. It's an honor, a genuine honor to be in this special place on this special day. Oh. It's just kind of like sad. Like, he shouldn't be up there. The real reason Hugh Jackman has been the uh, subject of false gay rumors for two decades amid new romance after shocking split from wife. For two decades, Hugh Jackman's sexuality has come under question with the rumor mill going overdrive when he split from his wife last year. This week, his alleged new romance was revealed with sources saying he is now dating Broadway legend Sutton Foster and they have been spending all their free time together. Despite reportedly stating that he is heterosexual, baseless rumors that he is gay have swirled for years, with Jackman fueling the whisper by poking fun at the speculation. He also addressed the original claims that they date back to uh, a role he played in 2003. At the time, Hugh Jackman, 56, was happily married to Deborah Lee Furness, but was playing openly gay singer Peter Allen in The Boy From Oz on Broadway. Speaking about taking the role at the time, he said, some people said, it's brave of you to play as a gay man, and I think that's very dated, don't you? During the production, he had to kiss co-star Jared Emek on stage, and reflecting on that moment, he thinks that sparked the rumors. It's just, you seem gay. I know that's kind of like a little phobic to say, but like I don't look at Hugh Jackman and think he likes women. You know what I'm saying? Strange guy. He does very flirtatious things. Think about it. Do you really think that Hugh Jackman has never hooked up with a guy? Come on. Of course he has. And that's fine, but be honest. It's because he's a boomer and he doesn't want to come out. His ex-wife spoke on rumors that her ex-husband is gay. And if you're having to speak about it, that's because you're overcompensating because he probably is. Like people tell me, oh, you're terrible or you're a piece of garbage and I don't respond to it. I mean, I kind of just did, but it's like, because I know I'm not. But if you're having to tell us over and over, you probably are. Here is his ex-wife. Mm -hmm. And I heard recently, and I won't say names, of a, a big star, you know, very big, you know, self-assured star. He was getting a lot of flack said about him and it was really hurtful. So she won't even say the name. I don't think, as a human being, if you read something, and especially if it's a... Listen to this. She's like Kayla Nicole, where she can't say Travis's name. And I heard recently, and I won't say names, of a, a big star, you know, very big, you know, self-assured star. He was getting a lot of flack said about him, and it was really hurtful. I don't think, as a human being, if you read something, and especially if it's a lie, and it's, it's slander, that it doesn't affect you and hurt you. 
It shouldn't. You're famous. You played uh, Wolverine. You're a famous actor. People are going to talk about you. My show is getting bigger by the day, and people talk about me, and I just deal with it. When you're having to tell everybody something, it's probably because there's a little truth to it. Like, how can these people say this? Mm. When you're a celebrity, you're so open slather to people wanting to say negative things. I mean, Hugh's been gay for whatever. I mean, hello, guys. If he was gay, he could be gay. He didn't have to hide in the closet. No, of course he would have to hide in the closet. He's born in the 60s. It was a different era. Come on now. Rock Hudson was in the closet. I know it's an obscure name, but like there were people that were in the closet. Let's not rewrite the past just because things are openly cool now about being gay. And I'm 100% for gay rights, but don't act like things were accepted. Not anymore. Yeah. And you're rewriting the past. He'd be dating Brad Pitt or whatever, <laughs> you know? Yeah. What the Brad Whoever said Brad Pitt was gay. Now you're just saying a bunch of nonsense. Okay, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Yes. No, but I'm saying it's so... This is on the Not an Overnight Success podcast. This guy's a kiss ass. It's silly, and then people perpetuate silly things, and it's it's boring. Hugh and I don't, to be honest, it's only when we sort of, it comes across us, but we don't read a lot of that stuff. We we're No, but you talk about it on a podcast. <laughs> like, there's things that are written about me online, and I haven't read them. There's videos about me. I haven't watched them. I'm never going to. I don't want that in my brain. You can claim all you want that you don't read it, but then when you're talking about it, you probably read it. Adam Carolla, who's one of my biggest influences. I love the Adam Carolla show on 971 Free FM growing up. I heard about it online um, when he was on KLSX in Los Angeles, and I've listened to his podcast for 15 years, and um, I was a little too young for Loveline or... Uh, the man show, but I'm a huge Adam fan. And he said the best way to success is to never Google yourself. And I mean, I Google myself, but if I see something negative, I don't watch it. What I'm saying is when it comes to Hugh Jackman, they can claim all they want that they don't care. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you're talking about it, you do care. Now, next on Happy Hour, Dalton is um kind of a rundown suburb in kind of a sketchy part outside of Chicago. And there's that mayor that was using all the money for her own like wigs and that. Well, she went on a little bit of a rant threatening to have her enemies arrested when she's the one that should be arrested. This is one of the reasons why I moved out of Illinois. It's just pure corruption and nothing ever happens. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Here's a little bit of this dirty, rotten imbecile talking. Shut up. I'll be speaking arrest. For individuals involved. She just seems like a racist piece of garbage. I will be pressing charges. Pressing charges because I'm a sociopathic imbecile who was never cool growing up. So now this is my power trip because I'm a dirty, rotten bitch. It's a lot. Mm. And that's just me telling you a little bit. A little bit. Because all this point the finger to Tiffany or, yeah. or lie on me, mm. I'm over it. Oh, are you? I think it's. If you're over it, why are you talking about it? It sounds like it affects you a little bit. You notice how I have haters and I talk about it for about five minutes and then all of a sudden I drop it? Mm -hmm. That's the same thing. When you talk about it, you're giving it light. South suburban politician Tiffany Henyard appears to have lost control of both governments she runs. Now she's teasing a big announcement that she claims will result in some of her opponents being arrested and charged. This is Ben Bradley, who's a really good reporter at uh, uh, WGN Channel News 9, who is the first one to report about it. And I'm just seeing right here, she calls herself super mayor. You're a bitch. Hey guys, we do not have a call, so we will not be having a board meeting this evening. One of Tiffany Henyard's allies resigned. Another has turned on her and refused to attend last night's Thornton Township meeting. I bet she's insufferable to work for. She should run for president like Kamala. It's a similar story in the village of Dalton, where a majority of trustees oppose this self-proclaimed super mayor. Because all this point the finger to Tiffany or, or yeah. lie on me, I'm over it. Oh, are you? Then don't commit crimes and use money, you sketchy imbecile. Now it's time for me mm. to speak. Oh, really? 
Because we all want to hear your bitchy tone of voice. Oh, when we wake up in the morning, we want to hear you talk. <laughs> you cackling hen. Henyard spent an hour and a half. That kind of works. Cackling hen, Henyard. <laughs> half on Facebook Live after the meeting, making a series of claims. It's a power grab. That's it. Power and money grab. For more than a year, Henyard has fiercely fought against her critics. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking. Let me hear this real quick. Not against her critics. Y'all are black. Everything has to be about race. Whenever a corrupt politician gets in trouble, they're like, because oh, I'm black. No, it's because you're corrupt. Against her critics. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman. This is what I'm sick of. I obviously despise racism. I 100% do. But you can't use it when you commit crimes. She would be prosecuting the white person if they did it. Shut up, bitch. That's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, so because you're black, you should get away with any crime? She probably thinks Lil Durk should be free. Shut up, you imbecile. She's promised but so far failed to fully explain spending more than 100,000 taxpayer dollars on first-class travel for But I'm black. I should get away with anything. Herself and her allies. Can you imagine working for her? She probably would turn on you so quickly. Public money that went to her now defunct namesake cancer charity. Oh yeah, I bet she used none of the money on what it was supposed to be used on. And expensive events with flown in celebrities that cost more than $80,000. Mm. All of it exposed by WGN Investigates. But now she's taking her fight further, claiming without evidence her opponents are corrupt. I will be seeking arrest yeah for individuals mm. involved yeah i will be pressing charges oh really why hasn't anybody pressed charges on her this is the most illinois thing ever that you have the reporters doing more work than the actual prosecutors because the prosecutors are probably just as corrupt as her they probably went to all her parties it's a lot all right and that's just me telling you a little bit a little bit a little bit what are you gonna do nothing what, are you going to put a hit on somebody like Lil Dirk? Henyard's grip on power loosens. She's also facing an eviction lawsuit. I think that in her mind, she feels like she's untouchable. This is her landlord. She is untouchable. She committed so many sketchy things and there's no charges? Come on now. Of course she's untouchable, unfortunately. Which is a problem. Landlord Janetta Hull describes herself as a longtime friend of the Henyard family and Oh, that must suck having her as a friend. She would turn on you so fast. Dalton, but notes Tiffany and her boyfriend, who makes $100,000 working for the township. Oh, uh, that sounds sketchy. Make good money while refusing to pay rent. <laughs> Dumb bitch. When you die, no one's going to miss you. Besides your whipped boyfriend. You know, in that relationship, if you're dating Tiffany, oh my God, are you whipped? She is wearing the pants in that relationship. He's the bottom. I have other bills. I have a child to take care of. I can't afford to pay for where you live. Oh, but I'm black. I should get away with everything. You make, you're making $375,000. Yeah, pay your rent. Henyard's attorney says he'll defend her against the eviction lawsuit, but he did not explain why a couple who collects nearly $375,000 a year in taxpayer-funded salaries allegedly stopped paying rent. Here's the thing. She's probably like saying that black people don't have the same rights as white people. And then you're doing things like that that make black people look bad. What an imbecile. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. Here is Shaq giving some advice to Angel Reese about money. But I have a solution for that, and nobody's going to like my solution. I'm here. So let, let me explain why I came up with this solution first. In, in women's beach volleyball, let's just say the, the net is 10 well, women is lower just a little bit. I'm not saying lower it to nine, five, nine, six, but just nine, nine. Just so we can dunk? Yes. No. No, see? No. We just will put out bad products.
And, 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 and I hate when men say that. But listen, that's the only difference. We start dunking them. Watch, what? watch. I'm, I'm gonna show you something. And this for y'all editors, right? We got shooters. Y'all got shooters. Oh, guys got some handles. Girls got some handles. Oh, we got this. We got that. Oh, we got talkers. Oh, we got brawls. Only thing is missing is the dunk. You know, I so don't feel like it still would change. I'm telling you. Oh, it would 100% change. I don't think what? so. This is the problem with Angel Reed. She doesn't seem like she wants to listen to anybody because she's successful and she's a, a success story outside of Baltimore. She thinks she knows everything, and that's going to be her downfall. Kaylin Clark seems like she listens to actual people. Huh? Bro, you dunking and getting man, Trust me in the gym. <laughs> Unapologetically Angel is the name of the podcast, and it's perfectly said. Also, here... I met Charlemagne the God. I was a huge fan of Charlemagne growing up. And um, I don't like what he's become. He has a little bit of racism. I don't like when he calls white people mayo. I've interviewed him on the show, but ever since Trump got elected, there's that saying Trump derangement syndrome. That's Charlemagne. Charlemagne and Anderson Cooper got into a little bit of an argument. You know, Donald Trump, he, you know, for any for whatever you think about him, if you like him, if you hate him, he is certainly who he is. He's showing us who he is every single day. Yeah, which is a fascist. And it's crazy because you still don't have news networks having that conversation. Like when somebody says, uh, when somebody questions Kamala Harris's blackness or is he a DEI hire, y'all will have roundtable discussions about that, asking that question. It's a good point. How come you're not having roundtable discussions asking, is Donald Trump a fascist? Actually, not even asking it, stating it. I mean, when you look. Because then that's an opinion being stated. Look at the things that he's talking about doing, uh, jailing journalists, journalists, jailing his political opponents, turning the military on American citizens. The guy said he wanted to terminate the Constitution to overthrow the results of an election. How come that is not the topic of discussion on networks like CNN every day? But do you think that, I mean, you were raising this with Kamala Harris about her own authenticity, about her own willingness to, to just, you know, say things that aren't crafted. Do you think she needs to do more of that? You know, Trump's going to go. Trump's going to go. Uh, apparently, yes. uh, apparently, Trump's going on is going to tape a thing with with Joe Rogan. Do you think she should should do that? I think that she should keep calling Donald Trump a fascist. And I think this is when Charlemagne has nothing. This is he was so good in the mid 2010s. He was brilliant, and now it's just like we get it. He's probably a fascist. But what else do you have? Again, you claim to not like Trump, but that's all you talk about, bro. That Americans need to keep looking at the rhetoric of Donald Trump because I don't know why we're even thinking about electing somebody who's talking about putting people in camps. I don't know why we're talking, or why we want to elect somebody who's talking about mass deportation. I don't know why we're having this conversation which, about somebody who wants to terminate the Constitution. Honestly, Charlemagne should be hoping that Trump gets elected because it gives him content for four more years. This is all he's talked about, bro. You're the same guy that called white people mayo. Shut up. You're a tad bit racist. To overthrow the results of an election. Aren't we supposed to be a patriotic country? All right. The video is uh, pausing on me. Should we even keep playing it? I have the saying, if I'm bored, you are bored. It's just Charlemagne. I'm always right, even though I was accused of rape, but no one wants to talk about that because I'm the money maker for iHeartMedia. So heaven forbid anybody call that out. Mm-hmm. He reminds me a little bit of Kobe Bryant. Got kind of a sketchy past, but because he's successful, we all ignore it. You know how they say make America great again? There should be one for make Charlemagne great again. He was so good back in the day. The dude was awesome. Donkey of the day. And now that's all he talks about. Also here, Denver Broncos star Josh Reynolds shot in head after leaving strip club at 3 a.m., which you should leave a strip club after, let's say, 1 a.m. There's no reason to be out that late. And uh, he's not a star. In the regular season, he has 183 yards, 12 receptions, and one touchdown. That's what drives me nuts about the media is when they say someone's a star, but they're clearly not. He's an NFL player. When you call everybody a star, you're pretty much just watering down the uh, whole name star. Everyone's a star then. Mm-hmm. Also here, Mia Khalifa talks about PTSD with uh, military which um, Mia Khalifa is a terrible person. She was bad at porn. It was very boring. Um, 
So I don't know why people are so mad about Mia Khalifa. I'm loading up the clip. But um, what, I'm, what I mean by mad about Mia Khalifa is no one should take her seriously. She had sex with eight guys at once. She's not credible. Mm-hmm. To everybody who is not in the U.S. military, good morning to everybody who is sitting at home. You've sucked penis for a living. Shut up. Home and not on soil that doesn't belong to them, fighting a war for a country that doesn't care about them. She seems insufferable. I feel like arguments with Mia Khalifa, she makes it really personal. I hope you go over there and get your... A little brain all scrambled up with PTSD, and then you have you've had semen on your face. Shut up. And come back here and see how much the United States cares about you, poop. I mean, it's kind of true, but see how much they care about you when you come back. Oh, with I bet she uses teeth during head. Oh, I'm so sad. I piss my pants every time I see a falafel stand. Remember when you were a sports journalist? What happened to that? In Manhattan, you sucked at it. Let's see how much the which you're good at sucking. The VA cares about you. Let's see what they tell you to do with your little broken brain. Oh God, that voice! I mean, even her moans in the porn were like. Eh, eh. From going over to fight a war that's not yours, they're going to tell you to try breathing exercises because the U.S. government mm. does not give a fuck about you once you cannot die for them. No one gives a fuck about you. All you do is made a few pornos that were terrible. Once you're done, once you're a shell, they don't. Blah blah blah. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs> I, I just can't. When you have Mia Khalifa giving her take on PTSD, I mean, obviously she has PTSD. She was in porn. So I guess she would know about PTSD. I have PTSD from listening to that broad talk. Mm-hmm. Happy hour. Happy hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy hour will be right back. Whenever we're going outside, um, we all I smell is poop. In the nuts, and we'll call it a day. As a reminder, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip over it. But Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour takes pride in his selection, so stick around, folks. Something beautiful right here. Yeah. Something epic. Big, this official. Matthias. Let's make it. Look, I was being a nice guy. I leave that to them dudes that shoot hoops. I'd rather roll through in a new coupe with chicks that get 200 to do shoots. Rolling a shooby doobie while we listen to smooth grooves. Dude, I tried to told you I'm hot like magma. And keep them in. I'm stashed up in the Dodge Magnum near the stash of the Magnums. Never know which one I'ma use. Right there, I got a couple people. Confused, cause I never lose, cause I never snooze. Pop shit, then I pop this shit, knock you out of your shoes. I shut down crews and rock Taylor May suits and Louis shoes. It's hard to do what I do. Stunning like evil, Knievel, keep a watch face see through. I do this for my people, selling through they screen door. My mom said I was a walking felony, cause I kept 16s in the closet like Kelly. Shop with the sellers. Dogs ain't barking at them, chickens ain't fucking at them, pigs ain't searching at them, birds ain't chirping at them. I should pull this jammy and spark And leave these rappers handicapped park And when you see your boy out Bow down or kiss the ring With a crew about myself I ain't worried about a thing This is Shy City, man Where the f*** you from? And your chick can't go up She ain't gobbling My partner Supreme told me Flows hard on these monkeys I hit pro gems and told them Make my wrist chunky Chain hung like donkey And fuck them dudes who want it Nickname beautiful Keep them breasts on me Homie, I'm funky like Woo! To let you know that I'm serious When them blocks get hot I'm in the streets bare chested I got money invested Please detest me My dogs ain't barking at them Chickens ain't fucking at them Pigs ain't searching at them Birds ain't chirping I'm a hurt them up Yeah. Uh-huh. 
This ain't the young and restless. You could say the drama like support a boy. Put your life on pause like a comma. When you cutting corners and you stacking money. It's like intern comedians, man, they get to acting funny. I know the MCs, the real MCs. Jamo saying, boo, man, them was for shopping with me. Get a pumpkin head in front of your little daughter. You a broke pop machine, get you out of order. I'ma come and get you. Don't make me keep me hit your for shells like the snail or armadillo. Watch your blue lights with the blue film slices. Slice, slice, make them look like he got gills. This ain't artificial, man. This real throw him in Lake Michigan and hope the nigga can't swim. And if he can't, I guess he won't live. Giving names, get your change. He ain't hate a bitch. Hey, I'm fucking at them Let's go. Hey, I'm fucking at them I am the grain. I'm a This following segment is brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts at amiracademy.com, 2700 22nd Street North, and that is in St. Pete. Women's self-defense classes, kids' classes, MMA classes, whatever the hell you need. Amir Academy is the place to be at amiracademy.com. This is also being brought to you by Rich Keeley Master Barbershop at richkbarber.com, 4545 West Kennedy Boulevard. And that is in Tampa. Go there and save $10 when you name drop me. All right. We're going to come back on happy hour. And keep this party going. Right after this. But first, let's hear from Hammerin' Hank. Hello again. It's your favorite San Francisco DJ, Hammerin' Hank. I may look normal, but the truth is, I have a condition known as autism. That's right. It's a condition, not a disease. Fact is, autism can strike anyone, regardless of who they are. People with autism normally have difficulties in verbal and nonverbal communication skills, social interactions, and leisure activities. In a recent study, people with autism are less likely to have a job and more likely to become homeless. I beat the odds by having loving friends and family, having a college education. I have even worked in the San Francisco Bay Area as an honorary personality for many years. Always remember that people with autism want the same things as you, to be happy and successful. To find out more about autism, please contact your local mental health center or visit autismspeech.org. MJ from the MJ Morning Show on Q105, 104.7 FM, Tampa Bay. And you're listening to the Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. He is heavily medicated, always high, allegedly, and caffeinated on energy drinks. What could possibly go wrong? Welcome back to Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Happy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Other stations are tuned in too. Tune in for the thrill top of the power. It's the Ryan Hoppy with the hour. Celebrity tales and wild confessions. Got your mind in obsessions, no need for lessons. Sex tales full of champagne showers. Yeah. With relentless power, 2,000 champs fill the airwaves. Turn it up loud, let's misbehave. Mm. The hoppy hour tearing through the night. Gossip tells the cut like a knife. Yeah. Get down, folks, we're hitting high gear. Ryan's got the buzz, so lend an ear. 856 49 Hoppy. 856 494 6773. 
You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at Juma.com. Bedroom meetings, high stakes drama without the greetings. Flashy lights, fast cars to chase. Ryan brings the heat, let's pick up the pace. Whoa, happy hot topic. James Franco gets candid about his relationship with Seth Rogen. Yeah, Seth Rogen seems insufferable. In an interview with Variety, published October 25th, the actor reveals that despite his best efforts, the relationship with his longtime friend and collaborator is over. Yeah. I know you have to distance yourself from him because he got all those accusations, but Seth Rogen just does not seem like a loyal guy. There's something about these liberal celebrities that they're just phony. Telling the outlet, no, I haven't talked to Seth. I love Seth. We had 20 great years together, but I guess it's over. And not for lack of trying. I've told him how much he's meant to me. The pair first crossed paths in 1999 while starring on the teen comedy series Freaks and Geeks. I don't know what happened. Seth Rogen was so funny. And then right around when Trump got elected, he became like Jimmy Kimmel, just a liberal douche. Going on to work on several notable films together. This is the end, Pineapple Express. I never saw the interview. Such as This is the End, Pineapple Express, and The Interview. However, their personal and professional relationships came to a hole in 2018 hmm. when James was accused of sexual misconduct. I know you have to separate yourself from your boy, but like, bros before... <clears throat> While he denied the allegations, the Spider-Man alum went on to settle a 2019 lawsuit brought against him by a number of women who say he sexually exploited them while they were students in his acting class. Yeah, that's not really cool. Mm -hmm. Seth later broke his silence on the controversy in May 2021 during an interview with the Sunday Times. I thought they were going to say during the interview. I'm like, I don't remember that scene. Saying, I despise abuse and harassment and I would never cover or conceal the actions of someone doing it. No, what happened was he was your boy, but like, I know Adam Carolla has not been accused of sexual assault, but him and Jimmy Kimmel are still cool. They just don't go on each other's shows because they have different like political thoughts. But like, I just wouldn't trust Seth Rogen with anything. Like your friend can be screwed up, but like that's when they need you the most. You're a phony. So the fact that you quit talking to him just shows that you're a liberal douchebag or knowingly put someone in a situation where they were around someone like that oh well that's a passive aggressive shot the knocked up star also revealed he had no plans of working with james anytime soon yeah i think that'd be insufferable it's kind of like when you leave a job and then it's like you can it's never the same like they were talking about me possibly going back to my old radio job and it's like it's like a broken vase you can try to put it back together but it's never going to be the same and wasn't entirely sure where their friendship stood at the moment. Telling the Times, I don't know if I can define that right now during this interview. Mm. I can say it, um, you know, it has changed many things in our relationship and our dynamic. As for James, he now admits that being cast out of Hollywood following the allegations gave him the time he needed to work on himself. Explaining to Variety, yes, of course, rejection is painful, being told you're bad is painful. Yeah, that's not good. 856-49-HOPPY. And then there is this headline all right here. There was an inevitability to, to what was going to happen next to him. Matthew Perry's mom, Suzanne Morrison, is opening up about her final moments with her late son. It must be sad having him as a son. I also can't believe it's been a year. It feels like it's been 10 years. Suzanne, who shared Matthew with ex-husband John Bennett Perry, felt as if something had shifted with the Friends actor ahead of his October 28th passing at the age of 54. Telling today Savannah Guthrie in a clip from an interview released October 25th. He went through a period, interestingly enough, just before he died when he I, he was showing me one of his new houses he came up to me and he said i i love you so much and i'm so happy to be with you now and i'm so it was almost as though it was a premonition or something in hindsight suzanne who shares four other children with dateline correspondent keith morrison who she married in 1981 has reconsidered the bigger implications of that conversation I didn't think about it at the time, but I thought, how long has it been since we have had a 
we've had a conversation like that. It's been years. Mm -hmm. Later in the interview, which will air in full on today, October 28th, the first anniversary of Matthew's death, his mom shares some of the chilling last words her son spoke to her. There was an inevitability to, to what was going to happen next to him, and he felt it very strongly. But he's, Addiction's no joke. He said, I'm not frightened anymore, and it, it worried me. Perry died last October from the acute effects of ketamine after being found in the hot tub at his Los Angeles home. This is what I don't like is I have friends who take ketamine for their mental health and it helps them. And it's like he had other things in his body. It wasn't just the ketamine, but the media just runs with it. Five people have been charged in connection to his death, including California physician Dr. Mark Chavez. Who yeah, that guy's probably freaking out when he died. He's like, oh, no, I'm going to get charged pleaded guilty earlier this month to conspiring to distribute ketamine to Perry. His family said in a statement to E! News after his death, we are heartbroken by the tragic loss of our beloved son and brother. Matthew brought so much joy to the world, both as an actor and a friend. Him and Joey were the funniest parts of Friends. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. And then there is this. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! It's Halloween candy meltdown. What happened to all the chocolate? They're two to a pack. Why, what is happening? What, why? It's true, shrinkflation has come to Halloween sweets. The top is the old bar and the bottom is the new one. They this is just corporate greed. They both cost the same price, but one clearly and kind of sneakily has less chocolate. So what's causing all this chocolate shrinkflation? Well, it turns out there's a significant drop in cocoa production overseas. Cho I love this comment here. It says everything's dropping but the CEO salaries. Chocolate is more expensive than ever. The consequence is you're paying the same money and getting less chocolate. All right, that voice is very irritating, so we're going to move on. And then there's this here. I met Jerry Springer about three, four weeks before he died when I was working at iHeartMedia Tampa Bay, and I went up to him, and I told him, I loved watching your show, but my mom thought you were the worst, and he laughed so hard and said, no one's ever had the guts to say that to me, and it was one of the most beautiful moments ever. The late daytime TV icon, the subject of an upcoming docu-series in a press release yesterday, Netflix announcing their two-part project will explore how the Jerry Springer show became one of the biggest and most outrageous hits of the 90s. It's going to include interviews with producers and ex-guests. That is set to start streaming in January. One of the, one of the greatest shows ever. Great self-aware guy. Oh, my gosh. Oh my God. Yeah. He was the best. That All right. I'm glad you guys think he was the best. What are you going to say? He sucks? <laughs> and then there's this. Because I was getting so frustrated with all the drama. I was like, I don't know if I want Wade involved in this anymore because he's literally giving my phone number out to random women. Bunny XO was sharing her regrets after reaching out to convicted murderer Wade Wilson. Bunny XO being uh, associated with a murderer, a girl that used to do porn being associated with a murderer. No, that never happens. During the October 21st episode of her podcast, Dumb Blonde, the 44-year-old claims that after getting in contact with Wade about doing a potential docuseries on his crimes. This is what's sickening. Everybody is so obsessed with murder. Do you want to die? No one wants to die. Do you want your loved one to die? No. These hot girls that are into murder are sociopaths. He began spreading rumors about her and giving out her phone number. Wade took it upon himself after that first phone call that we had to start giving my phone number out to random women. Of course, he's a sociopath. He murdered people. What did you expect? He's going to be your friend? <laughs> to reach out to me. He had this relationship with the- It's called the Dumb Blonde Podcast and she's really living up to the name. <laughs> to reach out to me. He had this relationship with this girl online who was so sweet. And yeah. at first she was like really mean to me because Wade had told her that I was like trying to hook up with him or I was talking to him behind my husband's back. You kind of were talking to him behind your husband's back. And we were having like some sort of relationship. And this, it, this was like one of his girlfriends, a, a really pretty younger girl. And I don't blame her for falling for it. However, Bunny, who's been married to country music star Jelly Roll since 2016, quickly sets the record straight. This is not true. I was like, he's outright lying. I've literally talked to him one time about... Why would you talk to a murderer? <laughs> ...doing a documentary, and I've emailed him probably two or three times. That's it. 
There's no talking. I said, my husband knows that I've talked to him that one time. <gasps> I was like, there's no relationship or nothing like that. And I was like, and I'm not going to let him do this. But you did let him. The podcast host says this caused her to question whether she should even. Because I was getting so frustrated. Let me go back here and rewind this. You series about Wade. I don't know if I want Wade involved in this anymore because I was getting so frustrated with all the drama. I was like, I don't know if I want Wade involved in this anymore because he's literally giving my phone number out to random women. Listen, Bunny XO, nobody has been talking about you recently. So this was you trying to get attention. Mm -hmm. Bunny then details how she confronted Wade, who was sentenced to death in August for the 2019 murders of Christine Melton and Diane Ruiz. Yeah, so he killed women. You're quite the feminist. And while the 30-year-old convicted killer admitted to sharing her phone number with several people, he claimed he has since stopped. E! News has reached out to Wade's attorneys along with reps for Bunny. Let me guess. They reached out to the attorneys and have not heard back. Bunny for comment, but hasn't yet heard back. Every time, like clockwork. And then there's this right here. Joy Lenz's former in-laws are pushing back. As the One Tree Hill alum continues to share her experience as a member of the Big House family organization, which she's described as a cult. Yeah, it probably is. The ministry's founder and her former father-in-law, Michael Galliotti, is refuting her allegation. What, is a cult leader going to be like, yeah, I run a cult? <laughs> he tells DailyMail.com in an interview published October 22nd, everybody sees things a little differently, and she's going to cling to the fame. Well, that's kind of sort of true. Good for her. She's going to make a name for herself, but it's not the way it went down. I would love for a cult leader to be like, yeah, I'm running a cult. In her memoir, Dinner for Vampires, out now, Bethany shares insight into how she became involved with the group and ultimately married Michael's son, Michael Galliotti Jr., with whom she shares 13-year-old daughter, Rosie. They divorced in 2012 after seven years of marriage. And while his dad doesn't hold back on sharing what he thinks about Bethany's recollection of the group, Michael Jr.'s first priority is their child, telling DailyMail.com, I have a daughter who's really important to me. I don't want it to affect her. It's too much. I don't really want to cause any problems for her. E! News has reached out to reps for Bethany and has not yet heard back. You need to stop doing that. This whole not yet heard back, it's so played out. We know you didn't hear back. You're not going to. Mm-hmm. The Galliotti's comments come days after Bethany gave more insight into her time in the Big House family, including distancing herself from her own family. She explained on the Call Her Daddy podcast October 16th. If you're having to distance yourself from your family, you're probably a problem. It happens really slowly. There were small comments dropped, like, don't forget, we're your family. We're here for you. She also shared that she and Michael Jr., who she only identified as QB in the episode, created a sex schedule to help with their intimacy problem. Yeah, that's probably because their marriage was on the rocks. If you have to create a sex schedule, it's over. Lumps. Bethany recalled on the pod, I was so disinterested in sex, I was then asked to go on a schedule, basically of like, you just have to do it, just do it, this is your duty, this is your job as a wife. I mean, I'm not going to defend a cult, but if you don't have sex with your husband or your significant other, you're essentially roommates, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on now, of course you're supposed to have sex with your husband, I'm not saying being forced to is important, but like... If you're not having sex, then you're just roommates. Your emotions will fall in line. If you do it enough, then eventually you'll find a way to enjoy it. Oh, well, that's kind of how sex works. Despite their tense relationship, Bethany has sympathy for her ex, explaining, It's so sad because the poor guy never had a shot. He was raised by this narcissist. He's thrust into a marriage with a girl that's not right for him. He's doing the best that he can. Well, that's true. Women speaking out on their exes, that never happens. Oh, wait, this happened right here as well. Mm-hmm. No! Happy Hot Topic! I, I had so much love and trust for that person, so I thought it had to be me. Like, I, if one of us is crazy, it must be me. Anna Kendrick is getting candid about being in an abusive relationship. During the October 23rd episode of the podcast Call Her Daddy, the Pitch Perfect actress talks about how her 2022 psychological thriller film Alice Starling eerily mimicked her real life. I didn't tell my therapist, I didn't tell like my closest friends that I was making this movie about emotional abuse because I had just gotten out of 
a relationship that was extremely similar to the movie. Um, and I didn't want anybody to tell me to not do it. Like I didn't want to get talked out of it. And I knew that there were good reasons for my friends and certainly my therapist. Uh -huh. She sounds annoying. Be like, is this the best idea for you like right now? With Anna going on to share that much like her character, Alice, it took her a while to realize she was in an abusive relationship. It was like an overnight switch. And um, that went on for about a year. Um, so it didn't follow that more traditional, like it's like a frog in boiling water thing right. where it started slow. It, it came out of absolutely nowhere. But here's what I love. I love whenever these exes speak out, yeah, a man should never say mean things or do something to you, but I'm sure you did nothing to poke the bear. Was built on this foundation of, I, I had so much love and trust for that person, so I thought it had to be me. Like, I, if one of us is crazy- It was probably you. Crazy, it must be me. Yeah, you sound crazy. Man, women don't want to take accountability anymore. I'm not saying all women, but- all week, all month, this whole season, women are just calling out their exes, but it's never their fault. You're not perfect, honey. You poop in the morning, but it smells like... Um, so it was very, very um, difficult um, to actually go no this i think this is i think this is him i think i think this is his stuff because I, I turned my life completely upside down trying to um fix whatever was wrong with me the 39 year old who says she spent years in couples counseling with her abusive ex then reveals how the relationship finally unraveled following one of their therapy sessions and then there was a day again toward the end where I really kind of like lost my shit. And I did think like, oh my God, like what have I done? But I sent the therapist an email being like, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so sorry. Like I, I, I you know, I need to control myself or whatever. Cause I had, you probably do. I bet you're not perfect, honey. Yelled in, right. in this session. All right. I've heard enough of you. Blah, blah, blah. Jennifer Lawrence has a baby bump. Jennifer Lawrence is stepping out in style. The actress attended the 2024 AFI Fest premiere of the Zorowski vs. Texas documentary, which she's a producer of, on Wednesday, October 23rd in Los Angeles, where she debuted her growing baby bump in a gorgeous white trench coat style dress. She accessorized her look with black shoes and a belt. The Silver Linings Playbook star's outing marks her first red carpet appearance since news broke over the weekend that she was pregnant with her and husband Cook Maroney's second child. She's got a big baby bump. The married couple already shared two-year-old son, Sai, who was born February 2022. On the red carpet, Jennifer also showed off her- All right. I have that saying, if I'm bored, you're bored. <sighs> and then there's this. Let's turn to Rachel Ray, who is giving fans a health update one month after this video Johnny, of her seeming to slur her words sparked concern. It's really sad. Tony Bennett's coming to dinner. I have to make sure the floors are perfect. I've had a couple. She probably has uh, huge drinking problems. And when you're that good of a chef, it's probably easy to gain weight. A couple of bad falls in the last couple of weeks. On the debut episode of her new podcast, I'll Sleep When I'm Dead, the 56-year-old Holy Midlife Crisis name of a podcast revealed she had to take a step back from physical labor. I remember when Rachel Ray came out in like 2006, my dad was like really into her. He's like, I like her show. I'm like, I bet you do, bud. She also shared the surprising secret to her 19 year marriage to lawyer John Cusimano. Uh, I bet he loves the, the weight gain because it makes him thick. We have huge screaming matches all the time, but I think that's healthy. I really do. It's not. I don't know that we ever apologize to each other. It uh, I bet he's not cheating on you. Eventually, I pat him on his ass or he kisses me on the head. And you move on. And that's just sort of it. You and John are just like living your best life right now, I feel like. You went through a season. It depends on the day or the... So there's a woman that's interviewing her named Rachel Smith, R-A-C-H-E-L. And then Rachel spells it R-A-C-H-A-E-L. And it's so contrarian. You and John are just like living your best life right now, I feel like. You went through a season. It depends on the day or the time you ask. <laughs> Annoying. Someone who is definitely living his best life, Jelly Roll. He just scored his first number one album and hit a major weight loss milestone, losing 100 pounds. 
Is that because of working out or Ozempic? I weighed in today. I'm feeling extra festive. I feel mm. incredible. I've never felt more clear-headed, more level-minded, more present. And next year when y'all see me, you won't recognize me. The 39-year-old who says at one point he weighed more than 500 pounds is currently in the middle of his The Beautifully Broken Tour. His nutrition coach shared some of his slimmed-down secrets on the road. All right, I got to skip over this because of copyright. Let me see here. We got some Diddy news. We got Bethany Frankel. We got Menendez Brothers. All right, let's do this right now. Eight five six forty nine Hoppy. It's eight five six four nine four six seven seven three. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. This show is for the hardworking average Joe and Jane the grind. Oh my God, I messed that up. Any other show would fix that and redo it. This show is for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care if you live in the U.S. or the U.K. As long as you're listening, that's all that matters. We will be right back on up on Happy Hour after this. Hang on. Any other show would have edited that out, but my show, we're genuine. We don't do fake prank calls. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. Whenever we're going outside, um, we all I smell is poop. In the nuts, and we'll call it a day. As a reminder, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip over it. But Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour takes pride in his selection, so stick around, folks. Feel honored. We live in the days of our lives with no Oscar. Even 
even though I'm young and restless from all the drama, relationships, and something like a soap opera. Cause if your man met you and left his ex girl, what make you think he won't leave you for the next girl? Caught your husband creeping with the girl next door, it came back like a boomerang, you vex girl. Equality is what keep me and my lady standing So when I tell her she pretty, she tell me I'm handsome If you and your man had a misunderstanding Let me bone your mind to this understanding He supposed to teach you to understand him So that's not a misunderstanding, that's a misunderstanding He treats you like trash, somebody to treat you better Cause one man's trash is another man's treasure That's addictive and papoose with everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, this whole show has been nothing but rants. So let's have some Zen vibes. The hour will be right back. The hour will be right back. The hour will be right back. Oh yeah, this following segment, we're gonna do all the sponsors right now, has been brought to you by DZBZ Honey at DZBZHoney.com. When I tell you it's the best Delta 8 CBD honey around, I'm a man of my words. Honey sticks, lollipops, a jar of honey, whatever the hell you need, go to dzbzhoney.com and at checkout, use keyword hoppy, H O P P E. This is also being brought to you by fortify.com, F O R T I F E Y E.com for the best pre and post workout around. And at checkout, use keyword Ryan20. Also, this is being brought to you by. Amir Academy of Martial Arts at amiracademy.com. When I tell you that Amir is the best around, I'm a man of my words. 2700 22nd Street North, and that's in St. Petersburg. Women's self defense classes, kids' classes. You want to be an MMA fighter? You need a gym to work out in? Whatever the hell you need, just go to amiracademy.com and tell them I sent you. Also, this is being brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com, the best printing company in all of the Bay Area. On the invoice, tell them I sent you. This is also being brought to you by the Chill Room of Pinellas Park, the best kava and kratom bar around. Here's how this goes. The Chill Room of Pinellas Park is at 6709 49th Street North, and that's in Pinellas Park, 727-827-2339. At 727-827-2339. And here's the deal. If you come here and tell them that you heard about it from Hoppy Hour, they will hook you up with a great deal. This is also being brought to you by Counseling on Call.net. You need help with your mental health? We all do. At Counseling on Call.net, go there and tell them I sent you and they will hook you up. All right. We're going to come back on Hoppy Hour and keep this party going after this. That is Handbook with Late Night Drive. It's always a good vibe when you're listening to Late Night Drive. Alrighty, let's do this right now. And now, something completely different.
know most morning radio is scripted? Listen, if this was any other radio show, I would edit it out. But sometimes Apple begins really quick, like three seconds into the clip. So let's redo this. Did you know most morning radio is scripted? Well, Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy is not. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. We're just in overtime mode now. Ladies and gentlemen. Let's keep the uh, lo-fi vibe going. Mm-hmm. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. Happy hour in the air. Yeah. Feel the vibe everywhere. Got it. Kick back in your chair. Oh sure. Life beyond compare. True. Happy hour, take it slow. No. Yeah. Let the rhythm gently flow. Catch the beats in the glow. Tune in, let it grow. Oh sure. Happy hour, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 856 49 Hoppy. It's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Happy Radio. You can always email me Ryan Happy Radio at gmail.com. Let's get back to the content. We got a few more minutes left. We'll see. Oh, happy hot topic. Let's talk about these scumbags. The Menendez brothers may soon walk free after more than three decades behind bars. I'm indifferent about this because yes, they've sure they've served 30 years. So it's been a lot of time, but the way that everybody's romanticizing it is very problematic. That's after Los Angeles district attorney, George Gascon announces on October 24th that he's requesting that Lyle and Eric be resentenced for the 1993 murders of their parents, Jose and Kitty Menendez. Here's the weird part is if you would have told people in the 90s that they would be romanticized by a bunch of people that were born in the 2000s, you would have thought we were crazy. I came to a place where I believe that under the law, resentencing is appropriate. And I am going to recommend that to a court tomorrow. What that means in this particular case is that we're going to recommend to the court that the life without the possibility of parole be removed. Why? They murdered their parents. And that they will be sentenced for murder, which because there are two murders involved, that will be 50 years to life. However, because of their age, under the law, since they were under 26 years of age, mm. at the time that these crimes occurred, they would be eligible for parole immediately. What's sickening is they're going to be treated like celebrities and probably interviewed. The district attorney whose office announced in early October that it was reviewing the decades-old case adds that new evidence has contributed to his recommendation. The news about the brothers' potential release from prison comes amid renewed interest in the Menendez's case in recent years. What I don't get, I think it's because I grew up in a Catholic family, so I don't like dark things, but I don't get the obsession with murder. Everybody talks about it and whatnot. It's like, I don't know. I just find it sick. In addition to two recent Netflix series about the murders, including a Ryan Murphy anthology series and a docu-series, there has been new evidence presented in the case. In 2023, a former boy band member of Menudo said in a Peacock documentary that Jose Menendez sexually assaulted him when he was 14 years old. Here's the thing is that sucks to get sexually assaulted, but that doesn't mean you can kill somebody. Journalist Robert Rand also revealed a decades-old letter that Eric wrote in 1989 when he was 17, detailing his father's alleged sexual abuse. While the abuse claims were prevalent in the brothers' first trial in 1993, which ended in a mistrial, lawyers in the second trial were limited on the evidence and testimony that could be used. Alrighty. 856-49-HOBBY. 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Let's go for some weird, lighthearted news. What if we call them Chilean sea bass? 
Goldfish is entering its adult era. The beloved cheesy fish shaped cracker brand now wants to appeal to adults. So it's changing its name for the first time ever to something much more serious Chilean sea bass. Doesn't really、uh, roll, off, roll off the tongue as well. It's come to our attention that some people think goldfish crackers are just for kids. Well, what if we call them Chilean sea bass? They look just like goldfish. They taste just like goldfish,、mm-hmm. except they're called Chilean sea bass. We heard you. The Chilean sea bass crackers are the same cheddar snacks everyone knows and loves, just updated with a new and temporary name. Man, it's so like 90s, 2000s. I remember my mom buying it. The vice president of Goldfish, Danielle Brown, says in a statement We know the love for goldfish spans all ages. Chilean sea bass is a playful nod to adults that the iconic fish shaped snack is for grown up tastes too.、Mm-hmm. But the Chilean sea bass snacks won't appear in stores. The bags will only be sold online from October 23rd to October 30th. What this is, is a publicity stunt because nobody has talked about them in years. And this was brilliant. This is kind of like Twitter renaming itself to X. Yeah, this is、uh, not good. Each bag sells for just over $7, but customers interested in traditional goldfish can still purchase the product at most retailers. I don't care. Make the taste better. It's a little salty. Although some people on social media were quick to weigh in on the surprising name change, with one user commenting, I really just checked the calendar to see if April 1st was tomorrow. Oh, this is where the article ends, is when you're、uh, reading people saying things online. You know what I'm saying? And then there's this Hillary Burton proves she doesn't mess around when it comes to her kids. That's good. The actress takes to her Instagram October 25th to ask fans for help in reporting a TikTok account impersonating her 14 year old son. You're a creep if you do that. Hillary shares a screenshot of the account writing, Hi, gang, need a little help. Although it's weird, her son looks like he's 25. These kids growing up nowadays. So weird. I don't have TikTok and neither does our son. But there's this creep chick who is obsessed with him and keeps creating profiles on various platforms. Weird o The One Tree Hill alum who shares son Augustus and six year old daughter George with fellow actor Jeffrey Dean Morgan continues I get it, he's awesome, but she's a freak for stealing the identity of a 14 year old boy. We've reached out to her parents, to her directly, we've contacted law enforcement. Because of certain actions she's taken, she's broken laws. So please do me a favor if you have that platform, report her. Alrighty, we will. 856 49 Happy. That's 856 494 And then there's this. It's extremely common. People want to keep you exactly where you are. Sometimes people want to keep you exactly where you are from, from the way you look. Someone on social media commented on my physical appearance literally it was 20 years ago and comparing it now. Duh. They want that, Bethany. Bethany Frank. She seems insufferable. Frankel addressing the online hate she gets because of the cosmetic work she's done over the years. Yeah, you're going to get hate because you look like a robot. But B, she couldn't care less about it. Oh, you care a lot about it. If you didn't care less about it, you wouldn't address it.、Mm-hmm. Kind of like how I don't care about my haters. I give it a heart and I talk about them for two minutes and I move on. Don't hit the player, hit the game. On her Just Be with Bethany podcast, the former reality star says trolls call out her physical appearance.、Yeah. Comparing how she looked when she started out on The Real Housewives of New York. I want to be a household name like a modern, healthy Martha Stewart. To the Bethany now, who has since discovered Botox. Although she's very attractive, we all know that I love me an older woman. I love me a cougar.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> Get over here. Let me spank that ass. My jaw was completely different because I hadn't found Botox in the jaw. My jaw was much bigger. There's this woman on social media that just like curses into the phone, being like, I'll do whatever the f- I want. If I want to get plastic surgery, if I want to look better, why can't I look better? Why? That New York accent is insufferable. Why, why are you f- telling me that I'm supposed to not get it and who cares at my age? I'll do whatever I want. I'll do what I want. I'll wear what I want. I'll get All these celebrities, they sound like they'd be awful to argue with. I've done what I want. We don't want our light dimmed. Like yeah. You know, you want to elevate. In fact, Bethany actually welcomes the haters. Oh, really? You're just keeping it. Happening, like it's going to keep happening when you keep addressing it. I like literally know that you are 
acting really like jealous and bitter. And it's annoying you that I look good. Where's the old Bethany? Where? It doesn't matter. Because this is the new Bethany. Like, you're so annoyed and I love it. Do you love it? I kind of know what she's saying. Like, I love when haters get mad. Because mm-hmm. the more you get annoyed, the more I know it's working. The better, the more you get annoyed, the better I know I look. I kind of like that attitude. I'm in my social era. I'm in my adventure era. Are you now? What is that looking like for you these days? I don't know. I'm happy, so I'm a little more alive and a little more adventurous. I'm a little more yes. Hmm. In the dating scene, how is that treating you these days? The dating scene has been pretty good. Who knew? Been banging a few guys. No, I still had it. Uh, girl, you know late entry. Oh, she looks good. Good. Late entry, yeah. Do you enjoy it at this stage of your life instead of... Yes, because we know exactly what we want. Oh, yeah. You know what you want? You want a 31-year-old <laughs> podcaster that loves older women. Mm-hmm. Todd Chrisley has been dismissed from his job in prison. Yeah, I don't think he's enjoying life right now. The Chrisley Knows Best star, who is serving time at a federal prison in Florida for committing tax evasion and bank fraud alongside his wife, Julie Chrisley, has been dismissed from his administrative duties at the prison chapel. Man, if you can't even do that, you're a sociopath. His lawyer, Jay Surgeon, tells TMZ. According to the attorney, the 55-year-old was working alongside a chaplain at FPC Pensacola to help organize religious services for various faiths until prison officials removed him from the role. (gasps) That's not good. E! News has reached out to Todd's lawyer and FPC Pensacola for comment but has not yet heard back. Every report. We know they're not going to report back to you. A rep for the Federal Bureau of Prisons tells TMZ, quote, Do you notice how E! News never gets the inside info, but TMZ always gets it, and they end up saying, we've reached out, but they didn't reach out back, but TMZ has all the info? Just stop. Just report the news. They're never going to tell you anything. For privacy reasons, we do not comment on the conditions of confinement for any incarcerated individual, including their work detail assignments. Oh, cry me a river, Todd. In 2022, Todd and Julie were found guilty on 12 counts, including wire fraud, conspiracy to commit bank fraud, and conspiracy to defraud the United States. Todd was sentenced to 12 years behind bars, with his current release date set for June 26, 2032, according to inmate records viewed by E! News. As for Julie, her seven-year sentence, which she is serving in Kentucky, was overturned in June, but was later upheld by a judge. Alrighty, we already know that. 856-49-HAPPY. And then there's this. Donald Trump is facing new sexual misconduct allegations today from a former swimsuit model. Stacey Williams, once a top Sports Illustrated swimsuit model, says she was on a date with none other than Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, going on a date with Jeffrey Epstein's kind of weird. Also, it's weird that he went out with a 24-year-old. When he suggested they visit his pal, Donald Trump. It was 1993. Stacey Williams was 24. Jeffrey Epstein was a billionaire financier yet to be charged with sex trafficking. The former model says they were taking a late-night walk in Manhattan when Epstein suggested they stop by Trump Tower. That doesn't sound sketchy at all. When they got off the elevator, she says... Trump pounced. The second he was in front of me. uh, She looks good for her age. But then again, I love older women. He pulled me into him and his hands were just on me and didn't come off. Yeah, of course, CNN's doing the interview. And the hands started moving and they (gasps) were on the, you know, on the side of my breasts. And then he grabbed them by the. On my hips, back down to my butt, back up, sort of then, you know, uh, they were just on me the whole time. And I, uh, sorry. It's okay. I froze. Shortly after that, she says she received this postcard delivered to her modeling agency. I mean, it makes sense that Trump would do that. He's handsy with his daughter, and MAGA doesn't want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. It's a photo of Mar-a-Lago with the message, Stacy, you're home away from home. Love, Donald. She says she never responded to Trump and cut ties with Epstein. Williams told her story on CNN last night, and it's getting picked up across the airwaves. She says she... It's kind of funny how this is before the election now. 
believes the Trump Tower rendezvous was actually prearranged by Trump and Epstein. Dumb. I just had this really like sickening feeling that it was coordinated, that somehow the whole thing was, I was rolled in there like a piece of meat for some kind of weird twisted game. Williams says she shared the story with friends and spoke about it in a documentary two years ago. But the timing of her new interview, 11 days before the election, is sparking angry backlash from Trump allies. I'm not even a Trump supporter, and that is kind of a good point. We saw this in 2016, that, that a lot of women came forward, and none true. of the evidence came How forward after that. How dare you? So we've How seen a tremendous... <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're arguing on CNN. What's new? Uh, the guy, Brad, from Home Improvement got arrested. It's right here. This is for a DUI. Did you just get hammered on, like, while you're driving or after you... Oh, no, I was... I, I went out last night. Okay, okay. I'm not going to play the audio because the uh, microphone is terrible. I wasn't going to do another music break, but we have Diddy News and then Rochelle Ryan, who's one of my favorite porn stars, um, says Trump would be good in porn. So we're going to get to that and more right after this. But first, let me let you guys know. You can always call the show, 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. This show is for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care if you live in the U.S. or the U.K. As long as you're listening, that's all that matters. We will be right back on Happy Hour after this. Hang on. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy hour will be right back. Whenever we're going outside, um, we all I smell is poop. In the nuts, and we'll call it a day. As a reminder, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip over it. But Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour takes pride in his selection, so stick around. <laughs> Sagittarius birthday November 27. Do it like that until I, I, I end up in money heaven. They be thinking they be flaming and torching them with the bullshit they handing out. So the twist to make a wishing. Blow the candles out. Blow the candles out. Blow the candles out. Sagittarius birthday November 27. Do it like that until I, I, I end up in money heaven. They be thinking they be flaming and torching them with the bullshit they handing out. So the twist to make a wishing. Blow the candles yeah. out, pull an all white phantom out I'ma kill him with the pants and the shirt and the shoes and the hat With the shades and the chain and the watch is the reason I be standing now Wear ice and spin that cake while I lick the icing off the cake uh -huh. It's twist the B-Day, y'all Come on, everybody, what's up, come and set it ready with me Do it like my birthday, do it like my birthday Do it, do it, I do it like my birthday Too bad. 
matching Gucci pumps, shoes matching the belt, skirt matching the blouse, chain matching the ring. Yeah, I'm doing my thing. Y'all got so many haters. Why is so many hating? Sick like a mental patient. I floss like a dentist patient. Just keep testing my patience. Sick and working my nerves. I'm getting spinning that money like the first and the third. Laying on gay skin, blowing cushion the wind, just like. Yeah, hey. popping no tags, the visas busting the sack. Uh -huh. I'm on with it when I'm going hard to get a gone mad chop. Models all around me, so I'm buying up the bar. Yeah. I'm a hood star and I'm partying like a rock star. Yeah. Only at my pick game, meaning you can't upgrade me, mommy. I'm the guap green king, like do it, let my do it, let my do it, let my do it, let my do it, do it, I do it like my birthday. Every day, I do it like my birthday. Do it, do it. Rolling on the 94, looking for them sexy Oh, I'm ballin' with yeah. Kelly, cause I'm a flirt Couple VIP with oh, Don Juan, got the yeah. street and shit hey, look, I do it like my birthday, I do it like it hurts Hey, okay. watchin' these bad, just do it in the worst way I'm a winner, mama, I am in the first place Catch me on the dance floor, throwing up my birthplace I'm an animal, I woke up on a Monday And subsequently, I ain't go to sleep till it was Thursday This is a shot of Patron and blow a birthday Get up with a bitch, you can take her home on the first day <laughs> Burger King, mama, you can have it your way Or I can bring another bitch and y'all can do it her way no, no. Hotel room, do not disturb way That's how I'ma do it when I do it like my birthday All right, before we get back to the show, let's listen to the greatest commercial ever. What? You're celebrating the new year? Grand Puba, you're still celebrating? Oh, with incredible deals on every new 06 and 07 Mitsubishi, including the all-new 07 Outlander. It's outselling, outpricing, outseating, out everything the competition. Plus, there's 0% financing on new 06 and 07 Mitsubishi, or cash back from $1,000 to $6,000 to qualify buyers. That is something to toot your horn about. Max Madsen, you might be mad in bed, but you're not crazy. He's mad. Mitsubishi in Downers Grove Countryside and Aurora. Shop online at MaxManson.com. Mitsubishi Motors, driven to thrill. All right, let's keep this party going right now on Happy Hour. Syndicated across the world and heard exclusively on every podcasting platform by searching Hoppy Radio. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Did you know that Ryan Hoppy got a vasectomy? Well, now you know, and we aren't even sure why we told you. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Other stations are tuned in too. This is my favorite AI song. Mm -hmm. Ryan's tall like the sky. Oh, sure. Right now, we're two hours and five minutes in. The longest is two hours and 22 minutes. Let's see if we can beat that. I think we can. That's where I live. Talk of love and fame Dating life's his game News all stars he spills With laughter fills Happy hour, all you need Rich and Ely, take a seat Oh sure Ryan's got the groove Oh yeah Happy hour makes you move We know Decide in Florida, they reside. Whoa, happy hot topic. <sighs> Let's talk about Diddy. 
Sean Diddy Combs is being accused of sexually assaulting a man who claims the alleged attack only stopped because of the intervention of a professional athlete. I see this comment. Diddy should be happy. He has nonstop freakouts in prison. In a civil complaint against the rapper filed October 20th, the man, who filed under the anonymous alias John Doe, alleges that the incident occurred in 2022 during a Ciroc vodka party in Los Angeles. Uh, this makes Ciroc look really bad which was attended by several high-profile celebrities. The petitioner, described in the lawsuit as the owner of a family business specializing in renting luxury cars and jewelry, said he was invited to the event by Diddy, who had been a frequent client of his. Yeah. Upon his arrival, the plaintiff saw, quote, many high-profile guests, but was instructed by Combs to meet him at his office for a private talk. Oh, sure. The lawsuit, obtained by E! News, reads, quote, plaintiff immediately realized Combs was intoxicated and acting strangely. The filing reads further, quote, Diddy is then accused of removing his pants and exposing his genitals to Weirdo. the plaintiff before grabbing the plaintiff's own genitals and squeezing them in a rough and sexual manner. Gross, bro. Burn in hell. The complaint reads the plaintiff, quote, did not know how to respond to the weirdly inappropriate sexual advance made by Combs. According to the lawsuit, the situation escalated until an unnamed professional athlete entered the office and intervened. The plaintiff says he suffered significant emotional distress and trauma as a result of the alleged incident, and he's suing Diddy for compensatory and punitive damages. All right, so then there's that, and then there's this. This is my husband, Ohani Noah. Hi. Los engaños, ahí donde empezaron las mentiras, ahí donde empezaron la separación. Jennifer Lopez's first husband, Ohani. Oh, we have two things playing at once. My, my bad. Let's start over. We're two hours and eight minutes in. This is madness. Y parte de ese divorcio fue por parte de Puffy. This is my husband, Ohani Noah. Hi. Los engaños, ahí donde empezaron las mentiras, ahí donde empezaron wow. la, la, la separación. Jennifer Lopez's first husband, Ohani Noah, says Diddy played a role in his divorce from the triple threat. Oh, so now we got the male version of all the girls I've talked about this week that talk about their exes for clout. J Lo and Ohani's love was short lived, with the two calling it quits in 1998 after just a year of marriage. Man, she has a huge body count. This quickly followed by J Lo's romance with Diddy as he co produced her on the Six debut album. I gotta skip over that, even though I love that song. I'm not gonna lie either. Today it's just Jennifer and Sean, you know what I mean? 25 years later on Despierta America, Ohani putting blame on the now disgraced media mogul for their divorce. He should be happy that he did that for him. He says Diddy planted the seed for his fallout with JLo, claiming their work together led to his crumbled marriage. ET has reached out to JLo's rep for comment. All right, so there's a lot of subtitles, so this isn't translating to audio, so we'll move on. And then there is this. Diddy. All this music, the copyright. And the staggering amount of new sexual assault civil claims being filed against him. There are now more than 20. And a warning, many of the details are disturbing. Oh, grow up. It's a part of life. Thing I do is do God. Yeah, don't name drop God. I don't want to be a part of God if you're a part of God. Personal trainer claims that in 2022, at an after party on the night of the BET Awards, Diddy spiked his drink, sexually assaulted him, and then later, he claims that his drugged body was passed around like a party favor for sexual enjoyment. I love y'all, peace. In another filing, a woman claims Diddy raped her after she met him at a party attended by Mary J. Blige, Little Kim, and Nicki Minaj in Las Vegas. To be clear, the stars are not accused of any wrongdoing. The alleged victim claims she woke up groggy and sore and, quote, was horrified to realize that she was raped by Combs. I can't even imagine that being a daughter of Combs. That must be frightening. I mean, this is terrible. Diddy has denied all the allegations. Of course he is. We're seeing the same pattern of sexual violence. The victim meets Diddy at a party. They're given a drink, and that drink is allegedly drugged. The next thing they know, they wake up with a vague memory of being sexually assaulted. I remember one time I bought a drink for a girl in Cleveland, and she didn't want it, and I was all offended. But now I get it. All right, I'm going to skip over this because of copyright. There's this right here. Here's what Charles Barkley thinks about uh, Joel Embiid not playing the season opener. The fact that the NBA is taking 
NBA on TNT and inside the NBA from us is not cool. We're going to miss Charles Barkley. I bet the NBA kind of likes it because he kind of calls out everybody. And you know these millennial and Gen Z players can't take it. But, man, I don't have any idea what the Sixers are doing. You know, I don't think it's fair. Now, listen, I want I want to get this number right because this is crazy. And bless the kid, number one. He just signed for three years, $193 million. Three years, $193 million to play basketball. We're not steel workers. We're not nurses. Like, people who got, like, real jobs who have to work 40, 50 hours a week, we, we're playing basketball at the most. I love that Barkley calls out people. Four days a week. Most of the time, three days a week. He has the best backup in the league in, uh, at Drummond. If they had to say it, and, and, and Ken and Shaq know this, yeah, you just say, I'm going to play 25 minutes on the second night or back-to-back. Or... or Dren Drummond plays, but to come out and say it in a, in advance was a stupidity by the Sixers. Hell yeah. One of the main reasons why I don't like the Sixers is that because it's the city of Philadelphia. And then there's this moron here. This is the greatest thing ever. 11 News has learned Callis not only has a violent criminal past, but a history of cocaine and alcohol misuse. This is John Callis, the Ravens fan who beat up the Commanders fan. The victory celebration by Ravens fan John Callis after the game against the Commanders turned violent. He's charged with first and second degree assault after a video captured him attacking Commanders fans in Federal Hill after the game. He doesn't belong in our city or around here. It sends here. a wrong message about Baltimore, wouldn't you think? Yeah. that's. A- it makes Baltimore look horrible. Exa- yeah, exactly what I meant. Like, our fans are awesome. It was childish. It, it's very childish because at the end of the day, it's a team. And I feel like it's never that it's never that deep. It's never. Yeah, that guy was a sociopath, though. Call for you don't got to do all that. You feel me? Feel Defense yeah. attorney Brian Thompson told the judge in a bail review Wednesday, Callis has a long history of substance misuse. He says Callis was on a 15-day cocaine and alcohol bender when the assault happened. <sighs> you have to be the biggest loser to get mad over sports. It makes all men look bad. It's the reason why girls are afraid of guys, and you are nothing more than a loser. Thompson failed to convince the judge his client should be in treatment, not jail. Until no, he should be in both. Until his trial. The judge questioned the security of the proposed treatment facility. What I love, too, that's a good point. But what I love, too, is that in that video, he says, I never lose. You lost big time, bro. I think he needs help. The criminal justice system is designed to both punish but rehabilitate. He's a 24-year-old kid. He's 24? Man, Gen Z is aging. <laughs> I thought he was like 32. Um, he clearly has a problem. Danny Smith is with the One Promise treatment facility where the defense wanted Callis to go. He evaluated the suspect. He can benefit from treatment, and proper treatment certainly make a difference in Mr. Callis's life. According to police charging documents, Callis attacked the commander fans twice outside across Street Market. The second assault is the one that went viral. According to court testimony, one of the three victims suffered a concussion and now has memory loss. Loser. I thought you never lost, so. I thought you never lost. You're so amazing. You're a winner, right? Pfft. No, you're a loser. loser. You're a loser. Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Well, you should be because you are dirt. You make me sick, you big baby. Hank Hill speaks for all of us. I'm just going through all the loser sound effects on YouTube. But alcohol make you do some weird things. You don't hit- Thanks, brah somebody in the face because they got somebody else's jersey on. Court testimony indicates Callis faced drug and or alcohol fueled assault charges in the past. Why, bro? I know you're a sociopath and you're clinically insane, but it's the stupidest thing to do. The most I ever got mad at sports was when the Green Bay Packers won the Super Bowl 13 years ago. I threw a plate on the ground because I had to do the dishes after the Super Bowl. And it feels stupid. It's not worth it. This guy threw his whole life away. He has endless money because of his family, and he had a great job. I hope it was worth it, dummy. As far as treatment, the judge says she would entertain modifying bail if a more secure treatment facility can be found, and they plan to discuss that next week. You know, he's freaking out because he thought he would just get away with it. All right, we've had a very entertaining but crazy happy hour. Now, let's talk about the amazing... Rochelle Ryan, she does very good porn. She does MILF porn. And uh, she has advice for Donald Trump that he should go into porn. 
I would love watching him have sex. He's probably very lazy and doesn't give anything. Hi, Rochelle. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. Oh, uh, you look so good. Hi, Rochelle. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. I wanted to ask you, I mean, yeah. you're in the adult industry. I mean, why do you think you and women in the adult industry connect with Trump so well? Because he likes big boobs and girls that sleep around. Well, I think a lot of people in the adult film industry connect with Trump really well because he supports making America great again. We want to get the economy booming. Hell yeah, we want to get your boobs booming. The border is locked up and he's the one to do it. He's done it before. There's a bunch of porn stars like launching this campaign right now. It's called Hands Off My Porn, encouraging men not to vote for Trump. Yeah. I mean, is that kind of weird that that's kind of happening? Are you shocked by that? That like some porn stars aren't feeling it. It's so weird to think that I've to her before. She's very good. I mean, I can't say that I'm shocked by it, but I don't think anybody's really going to go for that at all. We need No, I think they're dead serious. Trump back in office. First and She really wants to bang Trump. Foremost. And the adult film industry has always kind of been the wild, wild west for years. If there's one thing that's been around for a million years, it's gambling, alcohol, and sex. The adult film industry isn't going to go anywhere. If anything, everybody's going to be making more money and they're going to be spending more money on our OnlyFans and everywhere else. People are going to be happy. So one of Trump supporters, Laura, Laura Loomer, is suing Bill Maher for a lot of money because he made a joke, you know, saying she might have slept with Trump. Is she taking the joke a little too far by saying, like, you know, by suing him because he kind of said that a little bit about her? No, you know, I don't think that. I think she's taking a stance against the media and they always want to run with crazy, ridiculous stories. A lot of these porn stars talk with vocal fry because I've hung out with a lot of them, but unfortunately not had sex with one of them. But this girl's beautiful and she's actually kind of smart. And good for her. Unlike Mia Khalifa, who is pretty damn. And they always want to run with crazy, ridiculous stories. And good for her that she's doing it. I applaud her. Yeah, I would joke. embrace the joke. <laughs> but um, someone like her, I, I completely understand the stance that she is taking for sure. Oh, whatever. You've embraced a lot of things. Oh, my God. Girls don't get it. Like, I've had ex-girlfriends that are like, it's so weird that you can name so many porn stars. Mia Khalifa, Asa, Kira, Michelle Ryan, Tori Black, Bridget B, Kendra Lust. But that's just what guys are. Also here, I see here, Jason Kelsey, the next big late night host, they're reportedly coming up with the idea for him on ESPN to do a talk show. To me, that would... Sports Fan TV and save oh, over three... To me, that would be very interesting. I wonder if he'd be good at it. He'd be better than Travis. Travis would have a vapid show. I could see Jason Kelsey having a very good show. We're two hours and 19 minutes in. I'm just trying to, you know, go through this show. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do this here. 856-49-HAPPY. It's 856-494-6773. All right. Here we go. Here is the idea of Jason Kelsey doing a talk show. I mean, he carries that show with Trump. Jason Kelsey might be getting his own late night talk show. Unbelievable. So he signed a deal with ESPN to be a Monday night football analyst. Uh, he, he shows up to the set and he, and, he, and he breaks down games and actions. Well, as part of this ESPN deal, they are now apparently in talks with him about hosting his own show. According to reports, it's supposed to be like more of a traditional Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon type talk show. I wonder if they would try to have him do jokes because he's not funny. He's funny when he's not trying. I'm going to tell you right now, as long as... Oh, this voice is annoying. Travis continues dating Taylor Swift. We will never let these brothers die. It has nothing die. to do with her. If, if they what a dumb broad making it about... She's wearing her Taylor shirt. Shut up. Taylor's not going to be friends with you. Break up. Jason Kelsey, for sure. Finished. Continues to be a star. All right. That woman is annoying. Uh, here's KSI and Logan Paul talking about haters. By the way, I love Rosanna, man. You know, it's... Oh, do I want to say this? Uh, okay, this was, like, years ago. Mm. This is one of the reasons why I followed her. I actually had, like, a low-key crush on her. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah. Which do you interest? <laughs> Not anymore, but <laughs> wait, really? But, yeah, back. That's in the so day. endearing. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Now she's talking shit about your couple. <laughs> That's crazy. No, it's kind of weird. How the tables have turned. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, yeah, let, she could do her thing, man. Let, yeah, she will. Let, let her do her thing. Yeah, yeah, she. Yeah, the. Uh, yeah, like I like my cheese moldy, bro. <laughs> uh, he's an interesting guy. 856 49 Hoppy. That's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. All right, we're going to end here. An hour and 22 minutes. I mean, two hours and 22 minutes. We did it. But here's the thing we're going to end with Shaq talking about Joel Embiid being soft. It's sad. Before we get to that, Deontay Murray is already out indefinitely. He got hurt, and he already had like 12 points and 10 rebounds, so that's unfortunate. I like watching that guy play. I'm just waiting for this clip to load. Any other show would edit this out, but we're at 2 hours and 22 minutes and 22 seconds in. Woohoo! Here is uh, Shaq talking about how Joel Embiid is soft. You have to want to be that guy, and with his statements the other day, I don't think Joel wants to be that guy. Of course not. He chokes when it matters, and he's always hurt. Mm-hmm. I actually want him to take it personal. Like, you can't come out before the season's have not playing back-to-back. -back. Say it again. Spell it. S-O-F. Capital T. You can say what you want about Shaq, but he was so boring to watch because he was just so dominant, and it was like that's all he did. But, man, he was very good at that. Shout out to you guys. I wanted all the smoke. I'm in L.A. It ain't, it ain't Magic City no more. I want it. Bring it to me. So when he came out and said, I'm not playing back-to-back, -back, I thought about it first. I'm like, these NBA players would rather be influencers than uh, players. Like Ben Simmons. You don't get double team. You don't get triple team. Oh, you pick and pop. Why are you tired? Until he steps up and takes that responsibility and puts the city and the team on his back. Cause Which he never will. He can do it. Like You got two babies. You got him and Paul George. They're never going to do it. He, he got pissed off one time last year. How many he dropped? 70. 70. On the Spurs. So if, if you can drop 70 when you're pissed off, you can, you can average 40. He looked great in the Olympics against Jokic, too. He yeah. did. Ah, but that's the Olympics. We did it. So long. Farewell. This is the longest hoppy ever. Happy hour ever. I'm so happy you listened. We'll be back on Monday. Goodbye. Tick tock. Clock's a joke. We're playing cruel pranks. Hoppy's hour almost done. Feels like robbery in banks. Ryan Hoppy on the mic. Dropping wisdom in streams. Syndicated sorrow. Now it's time to shatter dreams. Oh, the hoppy hour is coming to a close. Radio waves fading like a wilting rose. Laughter and joy dissolving in the air. But we'll keep the rhythm. Oh, life's just so unfair. But the laughter's growing dim Eardrums missing Hoppy like fingers without rings DHX to FM Shout outs hit the street But soon the sound will vanish Like shadows in the heat Oh the hoppy hour Is coming to a close Radio waves Fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy Dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm Oh life's just so unfair Phone lines buzzing But the laughter's growing dim Drums missing hoppy like fingers without rings DHX to FM, shout outs hit the street But soon the sound will vanish like shadows in the heat Oh the hoppy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh life's just so unfair Clockwork to a show And now it's time to face the silence Like a TV on snow Riot Hoppy held the mic With humor so divine The void left in our hearts Wider than a canyon line Line Empty speakers silent by But coming to an end Like a roller coaster Stopping round the river's bend Hoppy's jokes and jabs These are daily grind Now silence louder than the thoughts We can't rewind Oh, the hoppy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh, life's just so unfair The hoppy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh, life's just so unfair Happy hour. Happy hour.
Happy Hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com And like that, he's gone. Whenever we're going outside, um, we all I smell is poop. I'll kick you in the nuts and we'll call it a day. Hoppy Hour is now over. <laughs> Happy Hour is now over. <laughs> Game over. That was the longest show ever. Two hours and 27 minutes. Let's ex- let's extend it by doing this. Mm-hmm. I'm out of breath. Goodbye. <laughs>